Welcome to episode 5 of Key Talks. In this episode, I have a very special guest. His name is Sean Evans. And Sean Evans makes money in real estate in a very unique way. And I think you guys are going to get a lot of value out of this episode. Enjoy. Hey, Shane. Thank you so much for hopping on Zoom with me today. I really appreciate it, man, for hey, you coming out. Yeah, thanks, Keith, for having me on. I, I appreciate you inviting me here. Thanks, man. So tell every, why don't you tell everyone about your life journey? Just take me back to the beginning and let's go from there. Oh, the beginning. Oh, yeah. man. There was this one. I don't remember that part. Um, but uh, so when I was a kid, my family uh, we lived in a two unit home and my father had a, a four unit house in another town nearby. Um, okay. so, uh, I didn't know much about it, but I know that there was uh, there was definitely some some uh, issues with the four unit. We actually lost that home. Yeah. Uh, to foreclosure. So oh. I kind of my eyes a little bit to this world uh and kind of got me on the track of like what's what is this about like i don't understand too much so um but from there i uh i went to college for to learn how to be a teacher so i was teaching like industrial arts and shop class and things like that nice. uh, which was fun you know yeah. it was a, lot fun. I had a lot of squirrel shiny object moments in, within that actually yeah uh, so i taught for about 13 years um, and I, my wife and I, we bought a house that was a two unit when I, when we bought our first house and we converted mm -hmm. the garage into a third unit. Uh, and then we moved up here to Vermont right now. So that was in New Jersey. We still have that house down there and that cash flows really well for us. And we, we have like a, a stupid interest rate right now. So, uh, oh, yeah. what is that? Uh, like 3%? Yeah, it's like 2.75. Oh man. <laughs> and I'm like, I have like 150 K in, in equity, but yeah. I don't want to get a 9% interest, you know, on yeah. a business. Loan. <laughs> so I was like, ah, so I got to figure out how to tap into that. But, um, yeah, but yeah, so I went through school. I, um, we did that house and it kind of led me to, to, to realizing that this was not the way to go, uh, with teaching for me. It, it's, I love teaching people. I love helping them move forward. And, but I like the one-on-one, -on -one, you know, yeah. like having interactions like we are right now. Um, you know, I went from 125 students at my old school until, and then I moved up here. I went down to like 32 students, like throughout the day. Okay. And so pretty big difference. Yeah. Uh, big difference. Yeah. So I was teaching recently, I was teaching shop class, like um, electrical plumbing, HVAC welding at a uh, technical center. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was really neat. Uh, but it was, it was time. It, I was teaching these kids how to be, um, you know, taxpayers versus being, you know, investors or business owners themselves. Entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. You know, there's, I got 16 year olds who are working, making, you know, really good money as an electrician, as an apprentice. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, well that's, you know, 26 to 32 an hour at 16, but you're going to, unless you do your own thing, you're going to cap out, you know, and yeah. I'm, I'm just training all these kids to do that. Um, and I just wanted more for them. So I was actually started teaching them once I got into the creative finance world, I started teaching them what I was learning. So it really, it, it, it like sunk in for me, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I am here. Uh, my partner and I joined sub two in June and uh, we've just been rolling ever since. Nice, man. So when you joined sub two, what did you think you were going to do and what did you end up doing? So when we joined sub two, we, we knew that we were joining for the network. Yeah. And, you know, the, the information, you know, we, we've gone through, we can learn that yeah. as we go. Um, you know, I learned from every single person I talked to. So it's more of a, um, it, I knew that the network is where I was, what I was going to be doing. So actually, um, I'm a closer and my partner's also a closer. When we first joined up together, he was going to be the, the, um, integrator side. And then he realized pretty quickly that that was not the thing. So yeah. we, we expected to have that dynamic and then we switched over to like, okay, we're both closers. So how can we capitalize on this and link up with other people? Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, once we joined, we actually joined, we're in new England. So we joined the new England okay. um, accountability group and just started networking with them. Um, nice. and right, right now we're finishing up, I think yesterday, actually Monday is the last, class for um i actually part of a uh, coaching program with jesse stanton um, okay he, he runs the growth co so i want to actually give him a shout out for that because completely changed my entire like mindset and career oh, yeah. and, and the way i'm doing stuff so jesse stanton right yeah 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 i think i watched a, a a zoom video of you guys talking yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first one it was it was really good i was like wow especially yeah. one of the quotes that he he said, talked about he said something about how millionaires they don't complain about time Bro, yep. blew my mind. I was like, what? Right? Yeah, I was like, oh. yeah. He's got a lot of those in his back pocket. It's amazing. Actually, that yeah. was that one was from Pace. You know that. that yeah. That, okay. That one. So you're just like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty killer. It's, uh, I ended up jumping into the whole connector side of things because I, I, I have that innate ability to, yeah. to, talk to people and stuff, but also, you know, I know that those people need help monetizing. And so that's what we're doing with this connector series. So we're actually running a, a weekly zoom series uh, where we're bringing people in and helping them, you know, everyone wants to be a connector yeah. and because they can, right. Everyone in the business is some version of a connector, right. We know in, yeah. in some way, shape or form, but for those people who are really good at it, they always have hard time asking to get paid right it's kind of yeah. that awkward thing like here i know a person and i know a person and great pay me like yeah. so we're helping them build that structure build that routine and uh it's not something i expected to be doing to be honest um i jumped right into it i actually put out some posts to connect with connectors just to see how i can you know connect with their contacts too uh and i had like 60 to 70 people reach out to me on dms within like that first week and i'm like i that's I can't even answer all of these. Yeah. But I was like, I'm doing a Zoom. And I told <laughs> my, my accountability group and they were like, Jesse's like, I'm doing one too. Let's do this together. <laughs> so now we have, uh, we actually had uh, 90 something people show up to our last Zoom. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, it so was can, you, can you break it down for me? For a lot of people who don't know what a connector is, what is a connector in real estate? Sure. So a connector is someone who um, basically networks with all the different people in the, in the real estate world or even in the business world in general. Mm -hmm. So let's say um, you come to me and you have a deal that you want to, you want to get out to, to the world or you want to yeah. buy it. Let's say, yeah, I would know, you know, maybe I know a PML and I can bring that PML in and I can connect the two of you together and help you get that deal done. Or um, I might be able to connect you to someone who knows like a TC who knows how to do the contract specifically in your state. Cause it's a weird deal. Yeah. Or, um, and a lot of this, this connector part is helping people solve problems yeah. So like, Hey, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. How can I make this happen? So mm -hmm. it's kind of like a JV, but also connect, like also bringing people together to help them um, solve, solve their problems and get to where they need to be. So what are the different type, types of ways that a connector can get, get paid? Is it just a one-time fee that they get paid in or are there other types of ways they can get paid? That's a great question. So it's real, just like everything here, right? It's all negotiable. Yeah. Right? So, um, <laughs> Creative so really finance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it depends on, on what it looks like for that person. Right. So if the deal can handle it, you know, can I be brought in as a, as an equity partner and get part of the cash flow, or That's can nice. I be, can I be brought in on the, you know, if it's a PML, how about we connect in the first five deals or the first 10 deals, mm -hmm. I get a, a percentage of, of the, the fee or the, the connection. Um, so there's, there's a lot of ways to structure it. It's not just a single fee. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's just a referral. Um, but most of the time it's, you know, it's, it's whatever works for the deal and whatever works for the parties to make it happen. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So then how do you go about actually connecting with people? Like, what are some of the steps that you take? Do you actually like, do you, you just go on to like Eventbrite or Google like events and go there or like, what do you do? What, how do you think about it? How do you connect with people? So how do I go to connect with other people or how do yeah. you connect with people together? Uh, no, how are you going to connect with other people? Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah. Honestly, right, right now. So yeah, so there's a, a mix of different things. So I go to different events that are mm -hmm. specifically inside and outside of sub two. Yeah. Um, so going to those jumping on zooms locally in my, um, my real estate community, dropping my Calendly into those, those events, um, seeing how I can help those people out offer offering to help them as much as I can is, is usually the biggest way. Yeah. Um, and my, my, my challenge to myself is usually like, I, I do a 15 to 20 minute call for the first one, just so we don't get in the weeds. Um, and my goal is to like, get them to talk the entire time and you know, like ask <laughs> nice. as many questions as I can to get yeah. them to say something, um, which is pretty fun. Uh, so, and it's a challenge. How, so how often like do you meet with someone? Like, yeah, do you meet with them like just once or is it like multiple times, like 50 times, <laughs> like before you actually get into a deal with that person? Especially um, on like the capital side, because I know like with capital partners, trust is like a big thing. So how do you how do you even build that? Yeah. So and that's that's a great question, because I am still learning that uh, the capital side. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, what I've been doing uh, to learn that side of it is I've been connecting with other people who are already doing it so that I can yeah. learn from them. So nice. you know, I'm offering to help them connect to other potential customers because mm -hmm. they have the money. Right. And yeah. I also potentially need the money so I can go through them for a few deals but also learn how they're doing. So I'm asking the same kind of questions you are. Um, and so to, to do capital, yeah, it, it takes takes quite a bit to get, get the trust of someone to, to sit yeah. down and talk through what the deals are, talk through how we, I can that be valuable to them mm -hmm. um, and how I can help them out and see how we can work together. And 
And my, my biggest thing about being a connector is, is being vulnerable. Okay. Like uh, being okay. honest and truthful and, you know, not fluffing anything up because no one, no one likes that. Right. And if they yeah. if you're, you're talking the talk, but you're not walking the walk, like what's the point, right? If I yeah. came here and I just said to you, like, I'm not very, very uh, experienced with capital partners yet, Yeah, but so, I'm getting there. So I guess that leaves like an impression too, right? Cause then you want to be remembered when you're talking to someone. So do you think about that? Like you think about, man, okay, I want to be remembered. I want this guy to remember me. What can I say? to make him remember me. <laughs> do you, do you, do you have those thoughts? Um, no, honestly, I just, no? I just, I feel like when I'm going into those meetings, I, I am truly genuinely want to learn about them. All uh, right. And I want that to be what, what value and what they remember about me. Because how many wow. times have you gone into a meeting where, I mean, it's like this, right? Like you're yeah. asking me questions. I don't feel very comfortable because I'm talking at you. <laughs> yeah. I'm usually flipping the script and I'm asking the other person questions. Right. Um, so how many meetings have you gone into? And you're like, hey, what's going on in your world? And, you know, 90% of the meeting, it was the other person talking. Yeah. And then they asked you one question, like, you know, what can I do for you? And that, and then you have five minutes to talk. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. That It's it's usually not like that. It's usually the 50-50 or like one, per, you know, that's usually how it is, but I guess that in itself, you learn a lot just by listening to the other person the entire time. So what are some tricks that you have in terms of listening? Because I know like you guys were talking about a difference between hearing and listening, right? And that that's something that caught my attention because I've never heard that before, like ever in my life. I've always, you know, I thought they were both the same thing. So how do you differentiate that? Yeah, I, I love that, that phrase. Um, so the way I differentiate it is you know, am I distracted by a bunch yeah. of other stuff going on? Am I looking at my calendar, answering calls? It's like being in any Zoom, right? We all jump on these these daily dials or whatever, and we're all doing work and we're not yeah. actually paying attention to the person's deal. But the the really the listening is not hearing, like not hearing, but actually understanding what that person is needing and, and reading between the lines, right? Because okay. they might be saying they need a PML, but while in that conversation, what they're really saying is they need a, a private money partner yeah. as part of this deal because the structure of a PML might not work, right? But hearing those little things and seeing those small opportunities that turn into big opportunities and how I can help that person in a bigger way than they expected, it, it's it, that's what I, I look at. And actually, one of the big things, uh, especially for any of the connectors I'm, I'm talking with, um, I like to understand where they came from and where they're going because where they came from is is probably more important to where they are at right now actually not probably it is more important to where they are at now than where they plan to go because where they plan to go they can go anywhere they want where they've yeah. been that's the that's the growth side so let me see what what have you done in your life or in your career mm -hmm. that has grown your skill set that you can apply now and that can be the, the the foundation for for moving on to the next thing, right? Because I meet a lot of connectors and even just people who are trying to do something, and they're all trying to do everything, right? That we all we jump in here and we're like, we got to build a wholesale business, we got to build an yeah. acquisition, we got to build a dispo, we got to build. Well, what are you going to do first? Kind of like what you said, your yeah. your own goal is to connect with wholesalers or agents yeah. and buy. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Right? Yeah. So. I like to help people work through where they are, where they were, and how they can take that skill set and apply it to where they want to be. Well, I think that speaks a lot of volumes. It's just like the fact that you even said, listen, it's not listening, it's understanding. Or listening is understanding. That, you know, reading between the lines, like that's very hard. It's not an easy like skill set to even have. Because I, I talk to a lot of people, but then when I talk to them, I, I hear them. <laughs> Sometimes I don't understand what, they, what they're what they actually looking for. And then if, even if I do bring it to them or to the table, it might not be something that they're interested in because it doesn't make sense with them. They just don't know how to convey what they really need. So like that in itself, you're already providing like a massive amount of value. <laughs> I, I feel like, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's amazing. So how um, do you, yeah. so go, go ahead. I was gonna say one more thing with that is, um, you know, I've gone through a lot of, you know, personal growth and therapy and coaching and things like that. And one of the, the key things is just like you just did a couple of minutes, a sec, couple of seconds ago is you re you repeated back what I said 
and oh. and repeated it to me to um, to make sure that that is actually what I was saying. Oh man, yeah, I I didn't yeah. even think about it like that. <laughs> so I was, well done is what I'm trying to say. Like, I, I, it's huge. Yeah, I, the only reason I said it is because I was trying to understand to make sure that I understood it correctly. <laughs> but that's it. Yeah, man, that made know. me feel heard. That made me oh. feel listened to. Oh yeah, that's so true. Man, this is really interesting. Like, I feel like there are a lot of little tricks like this to really like understand and, and where someone's coming from and what they really need. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, let's take it back a little bit. I have another question, like, because I'm really interested to find out how you how do you structure your day? Because having like a 10 minute conversation with someone, it can go by like that. So if you're just talking to them for 10 minutes and you're talking to 50 people in one day, is there room for you to understand and really listen and hear someone out? Or like, how do you break your day and structure that? That's, that is a really good. So I, I currently connect between three and five people a day. Oh, I don't, wow. I don't okay. fill my schedule to the brim because like you said, how do you do that? Yeah. Right? How do you do that? It's not possible. So, and, and the other thing is, you know, there are some people who are, that's all they're focusing on. That's not the only thing I'm focusing on. So if uh-huh. you are just a connector, maybe that is what you're doing. Um, but as part of it, it, you know, after I'm done with the call, I'm like, Hey, let's schedule another follow-up in two weeks. And I make, give them my calendar right away and say, Hey, you know, if it was a good meeting and if it was something that we can work together, if they're interested, I ask them to follow up and let's do another one. And I just give them my, my 15 minute link again and say, Hey, just reach out if you ever need something that we talked about or anything else. Um, but to truly understand and, and document that I take notes. So I usually sit on podio or whatever my, my CRM is. Yeah. And I just write down some real, you know, key information about, about their lives, right? Like we, you've heard my story a little yeah. bit. You know, you probably can take some notes down with, about that. And you know, I didn't even tell you about my kids and my dog and my this or that, you know, but that's where the, where the things that you, you, you bring back and that's how you can kind of connect with them again. Um, and it doesn't matter. Like if that deal went sour, it's like, oh, you remembered that about my, you know, my pet dog that has, you know, has a, a tumor and is <laughs> in the hospital three weeks oh, ago. Like, yeah. That's what someone wants to know that, that you're listening um, that you care too, right? You care. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's double. And then you also want to talk about the deals like, Hey, how'd that go? Or how'd this go? And so um, taking notes is really key and, and internalize. I usually give myself at least five minutes, hopefully 10 or 15 after each meeting to take notes and actually write some stuff down. So a, a 15 minute meeting is really a 30 minute meeting in my, okay. in my calendar. All right, man, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Shane. I really appreciate the fact that you even came on. I really felt like I learned a lot. And I hope a lot of people, you know, the viewers, they'll learn a lot as well. So if they wanted to reach out to you and find you, how can they reach out? Are you on Instagram, YouTube? Are you yeah. on social media? Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Man. Thanks for asking. And thank you for having me on here again. This was this was great. It was, it was cool to internalize how I did things and then pass that out <laughs> to everyone else too. Um, so all of my channels are at Shane Eddie Evans. Uh, so YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, all those things, you can reach out to me that way, uh, at Shane Eddie Evans. Uh, and then if you have anything you have questions about, um, you can give me a, shoot me a email at Shane at powder and And I'd look, love to link up with anyone who would like to talk. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shane. Really appreciate it again. And, uh, we'll chat soon, hopefully in awesome. two weeks. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Take care. Bye.